So we have seen the latest periodic labor force survey and the highlights that have really come out of it. Today we are going to discuss the broad highlights but for our viewers to understand the periodic labor force survey for July 2023 till June 2024 is basically reflecting the fact that labor force participation has risen while unemployment rates have remained steady. The labor force participation rate has risen to 60.1% versus 57.9% earlier, while the unemployment rate remains steady at 3.2%. Now, what does all of this mean? Well, to decode this, we have Ramesh Aluri Reddy, CEO of Team Lee's Degree Apprenticeship. Thank you so much for your time and for taking out the time first for our viewers to understand. Labor force participation is rising, but unemployment rate really is showing a steady path. What does this mean? Thank you. Thank you, Sakshi, for having me here first. See, uh, what, what this means is basically the quality of the jobs or the wages which people expect to earn is probably not where it should be. And people are not getting the kind of jobs they really want. And uh, I'll just give an example to substantiate. Even the top IITs, there's been only a placement of 60%. The success rate is only at 60 percent more than 40 percent of the students are not have not got campus placements now that just shows that people are not getting the jobs that they really want and there is also another concern where even the iits which are the top premium institutes the lowest salary in the traditional iits has come down to three to four lakhs per annum. So that was the lowest wage that was actually offered this year. And that's starkingly different and less than what it was last year. So this actually alludes to the same point where the quality of the jobs and the wage premium which people expect after their go after students undergo studies, it's probably not there. So there's more participation, but at the same time, unemployment is constant because people tend to either get to jobs on their own, which is self-employment, or probably try to compromise and do something maybe with or without jobs, uh, with or without wages. And uh, probably they also do it uh, in a very non-formal uh, way. So that's what it means. Right. Now, someone who's looking at this very, very closely, as someone who's leading uh, teams, how do you think we can train people? And how do you think quality jobs then can be looked at? See, uh, it's very important to understand what the industry is looking for so that uh, the academic institutions and the students are able to provide to the industry what they want. And that is when you'll be able to get better jobs and you'll also be able to earn much higher. Now, what that means is the biggest concern for any industry or any company is productivity. How can a student who joins become productive as soon as he or she joins the workforce. Second is how can attrition be uh, stunted so that there is longevity and there is continuity in the workforce. So these are the two big issues industry is really looking at. Today, the problem with educational institutions is that we are extremely theory focused. We probably do not uh, focus enough on the vocational part which is on the job training in a real life scenario. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, the curriculum does not have practical uh, sessions, but that's a very controlled environment. When I'm talking about on the job, it is in the real world. The exposure on vocational training is very, very limited. And so the students, when they pass out, they are probably not able to perform. And that's the reason why industry has to train students for six months to one year before they really get productive. Now, this needs to change. So students also need to embrace. The government is doing a lot of things. Uh, I'll talk about it later when there's an opportunity. But the new education policy, the apprenticeship programs, internship uh, announcements, which came up during the budget this year, all these are steps towards uh, uh, getting people more employed. Right. All these announcements are, of course, a step towards, you know, looking at the job crisis at large. But how do you think we can look at this uh, in terms of implementation on the ground? Like you said, what really are the urgent gaps that you would say must be addressed very soon? 
uh, very very uh, important for all the academic institutions to embrace the new education policy in its full spirit so that's the step number 1 step number 2 the stigma around apprenticeship which has always been there needs to be uh, removed and that is only uh, possible by increasing awareness like we talk about this people get to know about it because if you look at any of uh, the countries like germany australia switzerland or us apprenticeship is actually a fantastic way to get into formal labor workforce and there are countries where you can earn credits which are uh, similar to undergoing a theoretical or classroom training <clears throat> and you can uh, get the same credits by doing the on the job learning as well now i think the government is working on schemes uh, there is a abc credit framework which they have come out with which is called the academic bank of credit and uh, that will help the students earn credits even if they do on the job trainings so what is extremely important is every education program going forward needs to embrace nep uh, the student should have uh, the capability to liaison with industries get into internships apprenticeships so that they learn in a live environment they apply their theoretical knowledge they have learned and they are able to move forward successfully so that they become productive from day one which solves the industry problem so that's that's the need of the hour right so new frameworks and structural changes really the need of the hour thank you so much for sharing your insights thank you for this interaction